If you think of California, you might imagine year-round sunshine, beautiful beaches, and a laid-back surfer lifestyle. And while that may be true in some areas of the state, it's definitely not true everywhere. In fact, while California has one of the highest incomes in the country and has the biggest economy in the U.S., there are certain places in the state that are crime-ridden, have struggling economies, and are overall just not great places to live. So today on Across the Globe, we're going to be looking at the worst towns to live in California. Number one, Mendota. The town of Mendota is considered one of the worst places to live, not only in California, but in all of the US. That's according to a study by 24-7 Wall Street, which analyzed the cities and towns of America according to factors like crime, poverty, and economic health. Mendota came out number one. And while being number one is often a good thing, in this case, it's definitely not. For starters, the poverty rate here is a whopping 37.5%, and the median household income is only about $38,000. Compare that to the national poverty rate of 11.6% and national median household income of a little over $70,000, and it's pretty clear how much this town is struggling. Its struggles become even more pronounced when you compare it to the median household income across the state of California, which is about $84,000, over double the median household income in Mendota. Part of the reason for the high poverty rate likely has to do with lack of job opportunities. In fact, Mendota's unemployment rate is significantly above the national average. As if financial struggles and the lack of economic opportunities weren't a clear enough picture to show how tough life here can be, the state of its public schools might, as 97% of students in Mendota's school system are economically disadvantaged. Number 2. Modesto Located in Central California, Modesto has unfortunately not been making headlines for its growing downtown or for being the birthplace of George Lucas. Instead, it may be best known for its high crime rate. In 2021, Modesto had a crime rate that was about 37% higher than the national average, with a more recent estimate putting it at double the national average. And while Modesto has high property crime and violent crime rates, it also has one of the highest car theft rates in the entire state of California. In 2020, for instance, there were over 2,000 car thefts, equating to 389 thefts per 1,000 people. Additionally, Modesto's economy has been having a tough time. Its unemployment rate is 5.7%, compared to the national unemployment rate of 3.6%. The town also has its fair share of financial struggles, with Time reporting that only a little more than 14% of people who live here have money for shelter at all times. It probably won't surprise you to learn that that's one of the worst rates in the entire country. Number 3. Stockton. Located in San Joaquin County in California's Central Valley, Stockton was given a low score of a 5.2 out of 10 by U.S. News & World Report's review of best places to live. And while Stockton may be more affordable than elsewhere in the state, that comes with a trade-off, which is high crime. For instance, Stockton has a violent crime rate of about 12.62 per 1,000 people, equating to about 1 in 79. Its property crime rate is also high, with the city seeing a total of 2,000 incidents of property crime in 2021. These trends don't seem to be getting better. In fact, it seems like they're getting worse. Recently, Stockton was considered one of the most dangerous cities in the U.S. at number 5. Part of the reason for its high crime comes from the fact that Stockton filed for bankruptcy back in 2012. Since then, it hasn't really been able to get its footing back. For instance, Stockton is still lacking several important resources like social services and an adequate police force. And as a final point, Stockton's poverty rate is also above average at 16.3%. Number 4. Oakland Oakland was recently ranked one of the worst-run cities in America, according to a ranking by WalletHub. To determine this, 
WalletHub looked at two main metrics, which were the quality of city services and the total city budget per capita. WalletHub also did a second detailed breakdown of each city, ranking them by metrics like financial stability, education, health, safety, the health of the economy, and infrastructure and pollution. Oakland came out number 143 out of 149 cities with scores of 76 and 147 for quality of city services and total city budget per capita respectively. It did rank a little higher when it came to the detailed breakdown at 76 overall, but fared poorly when it came to safety and its economy at 126 and 131 respectively. Looking more specifically at safety, Oakland was considered the eighth most dangerous city in the U.S. according to another study from WalletHub with a score of 175 out of 182 total places. To create this ranking, WalletHub looked at three metrics, home and community safety, natural disaster risk, and financial safety. Although Oakland scored okay when it came to financial safety at 43, it ranked pretty poorly when it comes to home and community safety and natural disaster risk at scores of 174 and 155 respectively. As if all that weren't bad enough for Oakland, it also is known for having one of the worst school districts in the entire state of California. For instance, only 31% of students in the Oakland public school system met or exceeded reading proficiency exams, and only 22% met or exceeded proficiency requirements in math. Financial issues also plagued the school system. In 2003, the state of California even had to conduct an emergency bailout of $100 million to save the district from bankruptcy. While that was a long time ago, the district has struggled with financial challenges to this day. Number 5. Emeryville Located in the Bay Area, Emeryville started out as an industrial city. Today, it's shed some of its industrial roots but remains just as small as when it started, taking up only one square mile. And while its small size may appear charming, this town has unfortunately been ranked one of the most crime-ridden cities in California. According to Property Club, for instance, Emeryville is the most dangerous city in the entire state of California. In 2022, for instance, Emeryville saw about 12,500 incidents of theft and 800 incidents of violent crime. That might not seem like a lot, but it's a ton when you consider that its population is less than 13,000. Number 6. Commerce While commerce might not be quite as dangerous as Emeryville, it was named the third most dangerous city in California in 2022. Located just south of Los Angeles, this town of about 12,800 people has been struggling with crime quite a bit in recent years. The violent crime rate, for instance, is 999 per 100,000 people and people living here have a massive 1 in 11 chance of being a victim of a crime, whether that's a property crime or a violent crime. Niche, meanwhile, gave Commerce pretty poor rankings across the board. The site gave Commerce an overall grade of a C- and gave it a D- for housing, C- for public schools, and C- for crime and safety. It also was given a grade of a C in terms of quality of life for families. Part of Nisha's poor ratings may have to do with the residents' economic struggles. For instance, Commerce's poverty rate is above the national average at 14.8%, and the median household income is well below both the state and national medians at approximately $58,000. Number 7. San Bernardino San Bernardino was ranked one of the worst places for families according to a recent ranking from WalletHub. Specifically, it received a score of 177 out of 182 cities and towns, placing it in the bottom 10. To determine the rankings, WalletHub looked at five key metrics. Family fun, including factors like playgrounds per capita and recreation friendliness. Health and safety, which includes things like air and water quality and the number of pediatricians per capita. Education and childcare, looking at factors like school system quality and childcare costs. 
affordability, including the cost of living and housing affordability, and finally, socioeconomics, including factors like the share of families living in poverty and the unemployment rate. San Bernardino scored pretty good when it comes to family fun at 17. However, it scored pretty bad in the other categories at 166 for health and safety, 176 for both education and childcare and affordability, and 143 for socioeconomics. When we look closer at one important aspect families consider when deciding where to live, which is the quality of schools, it becomes clear that San Bernardino really struggles in this area. In fact, San Bernardino is considered one of the worst school districts in the entire state of California, with 28% meeting or exceeding reading requirements and only 16% meeting or exceeding proficiency requirements for math. Additionally, the district's high school dropout rate is also extremely high at 16.9% compared to the statewide dropout rate of 9.6%. As if all that weren't bad enough, San Bernardino has also struggled with high crime. So even if you're not looking to raise a family here, the high crime is reason enough to want to stay away. And when I'm saying high crime, I mean it. The crime rate here is 79% higher than the national average. And although its property crime rate has decreased in recent years, the violent crime rate has actually increased by 39% between 2017 and 2022. Number 8. Oxnard Located just north of Los Angeles, Oxnard is known as a fun place to visit, but maybe not so much to live. For starters, Oxnard is considered one of the worst places in the entire country to get a job, according to a study from Money Geek. To determine this, Money Geek looked at a few metrics, employment growth, growth in hourly wages, unemployment rate, the size of the labor force, and monthly wages to monthly rent ratio. Oxnard not only ranked bad for job seekers, but also had the worst housing to income ratio out of any other city they looked at, at 54.1%. For reference, the place with the best housing to income ratio was Springfield, Massachusetts, with a ratio less than half Oxnards at 21.9%. This high housing to income ratio means that people here are spending a huge amount of what they earn on housing, with less than half of their income remaining for food, utilities, and other necessary expenses. In addition, Oxnard also has a crime rate that's well above the national average. According to Neighborhood Scout, for instance, Oxnard is only safer than 13% of other neighborhoods. When we look deeper at the stats, Oxnard's violent crime rate is 3.65 per 1,000 residents, its property crime rate is 23.62 per 1,000, and its total crime rate is 27.25 per 1,000 people. What about why everyone's moving to North Carolina? Watch this video to learn about that.